Hey Flosstube, this is Brian. Welcome back. This is my 75th Flosstube video, and I'm excited to share with you what I have been working on this week. But first of all, I want to welcome you. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you enjoy the things that I have to share with you. And if you are returning, thank you for coming back and watching my videos. I appreciate it that you uh, are willing to spend time with me. Thank you so much for all of your comments. I have a few comments that I want to respond to uh, since my last video. So let's get started. First of all, Leah asked me if I have any videos that show how I do my stitching. And Leah, yes I do. I have a big tutorial on how I do di diagonal stitching. That is my uh, fifth floss two video. I will put a link to it in the comments below. Um, there are also a, a few videos that I, Stitch With Me videos that I did, and you could watch those and kind of see uh, how, I, how I stitch as well with one of those. And I'll, I'll put a link to those down in the comments below if you want to, if you want to check them out. Betty asked me, well, Betty told me that she wished that I would uh, start up Autumn Magic again. Uh, that is my hate that I haven't worked. It's been almost a year since I since I worked on that piece. And okay, I'm going to admit that my my antipathy towards that piece is kind of diminishing a little bit. I don't plan on picking it up anytime soon, but the chances of me uh, starting working on it again are are a little bit greater than they were about a year ago. So I don't know. It, I don't know that it'll be this year. That could change, but yeah, Autumn Magic is still in craft prison, as Brenda would say. Um, I had several people, after seeing my Queen sampler last week, I had several people say, there's no J. And you're right, there is no J. There is no J charted. And a couple of people knew, realized that it wasn't charted, and they asked, they said, I wonder why that is. And I can tell you why that is. I learned that when I did my Corazon sampler, uh, which I did a couple of years ago. And there are several, that is a sampler, a red sampler with several alphabets. There are several al alphabets in that sampler that don't have a J either. And they don't have a W. I'm not sure about the Queen sampler, whether or not it has a W, but because I haven't looked. But I would kind of be surprised if it has a W if it doesn't have a J. The reason why there's no J, and there's some lingua. If you, if there are linguists out there, who would like, who want to correct me, this is. I'm just running off of my memory. Is that in the old Roman alphabet there was no J? Uh, for example, if you look at how uh, Julius Caesar uh, spelled his name in Latin, it's not with a J. It's with an I. Um, Jay and I were kind of used interchangeably. I actually think what happened is eventually uh, some languages, the, the U, I, I, U changed to, the, the sound changed, and they decided to make a J to, replace, to signify that sound. So there's no J because this is an old alphabet that didn't have a J. Uh, w is a, another letter that did not exist in the Roman alphabet and was added uh, with later languages. So that's, that's why there's no J. And so, yeah, but that, it's kind of disconcerting to some people to not see the J there, but it kind of makes it look older, I guess, is the, is the way I'd say it. So for the final question, Deborah asked me how I got started cross-stitching. And that's kind of an appropriate question because of this, this piece up here. So I'll talk about that again. I, um, I basically, my wife taught me how to cross-stitch. And what happened is, um, she had, when we were dating, she kind of talked about her cross-stitching a little bit. And when, uh, after we got married, she, she had a big basket full of charts, and she said, I'm gonna show you my charts. And she went through those charts, and one of the charts that she, that she had 
was, was this up here. Um, it is called Village Skaters. It was a design by Stony Creek. I believe that it is still available in electronic form um, on their website. So you might be able to find it. And um, I saw that, I saw that piece and I just loved it. And I was like, I want to stitch that. And so I asked her if, if she would teach me how to stitch so I could stitch, stitch this. And I started with a couple of small things. Uh, I think I stitched three or four designs before I stitched this. And then, and then, and then I decided I just had to start it. And that took me, it took me a long time to stitch this. It took me a couple of years. And if you'll just give me a second, I'm gonna take it off the wall. You're getting a lot of glare here from our front room window and from the light that I have on overhead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it down um, to, to try to show it to you a little bit better. So just a second. Okay, so this is it. It's been over almost, it's been almost 20 years since I finished this. So it's, uh, it's kind of an old design. It's called Village Skaters, like I said. And it's basically a picture of, of skaters with a village in the background. And I stitched on this for, for, it took me a couple of years to stitch. And I actually got really, I got really um, discouraged with it because the village back here is all stitched with one thread. And I found that when I was burying my threads in the back, that you could see them from the front. So then I had to get creative as to how to, how to, how to end off without having threads that would show through. Yeah, I, I, I loved this design. After working on it so long, um, you know, this was like, like the first big piece that I ever stitched. And it was a lot bigger than, than I thought it would be. I think it stitched on 28 count Oh, it might be 32 count antique white even weave. I don't know what it is. But uh, you can see that I there were some things that I didn't know at the time. I wasn't really careful about washing my hands before I started stitching. And there is a lot of white on white. And the oils from my hands have discolored the white in this. So, I mean, <laughs> it it kind of bugs me to see that now but yeah so this was my big first one I love this house back here and I love the scene I just I just thought that this would be a great place to to be I, I just really liked it so I might try to give you a little bit closer look without the glare So yeah, this is the this is the design that got me started cross stitching, and like I said, it's been over twenty. Well, we've been married. Um, it'll be twenty. Let me think about this for a minute. Twenty six years. Our, our twenty six year anniversary is next month. So, I've been stitching for about twenty six years, maybe twenty. Yeah. 20, almost 26 years, and this, I, I finished stitching about 20, 20 years ago, so, anyway, so, there it is, okay, uh, the other thing that I want to talk about before we start talking about my stitching is, I had a giveaway, I, I announced a giveaway last, uh, I, I announced a giveaway last week uh, for this pattern. This is Quilty Love. Um, it's by Lori Holt um, from the Fat Quarter Shop. Uh, I'm sure you can find it on the Fat Quarter Shop web website. I have two, two copies available for giveaway. And I used the Rat YouTube comment picker to choose winners. And I'm going to announce the winners. The first winner is... Candace Kester, and I hope that I, I pronounce your name right. Please forgive me if I don't. 
So Candace, congratulations. Uh, Candace said that she was actually considering changing the colors and st stitching it in teals and blues, which I think that would kind of kind of be, I think that would be a good idea. I would be interested to see how that turned out. And the second winner that I have is Mama Saiki. Mama Saiki. Um, she said thank you for your videos and that she loves Valentine's. So congratulations to both of you. If you will send me an email or you can PM me on Instagram, either way. Uh, my email is in the, in the notes below. Um, send me an email and I will get these charts sent out to you so that you can have them uh, before, uh, in time to stitch them before Valentine's Day if you want. So thank you so much for, for participating in my giveaway. So this week has been a great week. Um, Work-wise, it has been great. And on Wednesday night, I decided to go to Attic Needlework uh, to, to participate in the Men's Stitching Night uh, that was organized by Gary Parr of Fiber Talk and, and of course, uh, Jean Lee, who owns the, owns the Attic. Uh, we had a great time there. I really enjoyed uh, stitching with the other guys. Uh, there were six of us and a great variety of projects that we were work on, working on. Uh, Jean showed us a couple of sneak peeks that I am really excited for. So it was, it was, a, great, it was a great night to, to see what everybody was working on and to, to stitch with those guys. And I'll talk about uh, what, while I did while, while I was there in, in a little while. Uh, some of the guys showed, showed some of the other things they had, they had stitched and um, they'd done some really cool things. Uh, one of the guys brought uh, a piece that he is almost finished with, and I looked at that and I said, I have that chart, and I got looking at it, and the colors, the colors in real life are so much more vibrant than they are on the, the, the picture, and it made me want to stitch this. So here's a, a little segment about uh, something that I want to stitch, and I think I've shown this before, is something I want to stitch, but uh, after seeing his his piece, it's gone up on my list. It's it's come up in priority, and this is it. It's a Marty Bell. Uh, it's an adaptation of a Marty Bell watercolor of uh, called Miss ha Miss Hathaway's Garden, and Miss Hathaway is Anne Hathaway, who was Shakespeare's wife. So it has this. This huge uh, cottage, uh, which I believe is a, a landmark in, in England, uh, with the garden in front. It's, it's really pretty. And like I say, the colors here in the picture, they look kind of washed out. They were a lot more vibrant on his piece. And I think I'm gonna have to start this. Um, it's come up in, in priority as to when I'm gonna going to stitch this. I've had this chart for years, I mean years, and I've just never, never stitched it, but yeah. So there's, there's something that I really want to stitch now. So let's talk about what I have been working on. I had a great week and I am excited to show you my progress. So I have been stitching um, English Garden Sampler. Uh, this is the design by Teresa Wensler. Um, and of course it's an old design and Teresa it is this is I think I read somewhere that Teresa said that she wanted to do a sampler that had all sorts of techniques that, and this has a little bit of everything from uh, stitching over one stitching specialty stitches beads cut work this has it all so it's a pretty elaborate piece I'll show, it what, show you what it looked like the last time you saw it. I'm stitching it on 25 count uh, Lugana Antique White. And I have been working on this piece for years, at least three. It might be almost four now. Um, so it's been a long time and I feel like I'm I'm in the getting close to the home stretch. I don't think I'm quite there yet. 
I think it's going to be at least another couple of weeks before I before I actually get to all of the fun stuff. But um, this is this is what it looks like now. So yeah, as you can see, I accomplished quite a bit. Uh, before, when you saw it before, um, I had it stitched to here. So I finished all of this fence over this side uh, with this um, urn of flowers. And I, this is the piece I was working on this week and I was a little bit nervous about uh, what I was gonna take to stitch on at the attic. I was worried because I didn't want to work on something this complicated, but uh, serendipitously, I love that word, um, I was able to finish all of this cross stitching and outline the gate uh, before, before Wednesday night. So when I, uh, Wednesday night, I, I could do this over one section inside the gate. And so that's what I stitched on Wednesday night is I stitched part of part of this. And that was that's not complicated. It's just uh, over one stitching um, and three colors. And so that's that's what I did. I stitched this part uh, uh, at, at the mid stitching night. And I don't know what it is about this gate, but seeing this gate stitched and filled in, it just seemed to me, it just seems to add something to this piece. Maybe it's because it looks like I accomplished a, a whole lot of, a, a whole lot more than I usually do because I covered a whole lot, lot, a whole lot bigger area. But yeah, I'm so happy with this, with how this look, it, it makes it look like I'm really close to being finished. So I'll give you a little bit closer look of what this looks like now. Um, yeah, this, this urn of flowers really turned out nice too. I'll be glad to get the back stitching in because once it's back stitched, um, it's going to look even better. And, and then of course the gate, all of this outline is stitched over too. And then all of these, all of this metal work, this decorative work on the inside is, is stitched over one with uh, three different colors. And I didn't realize it until I was actually stitching it, but there's hearts in here. There's a heart here and a heart here when the gate's together. So now um, I also start, there's a, of course, the rest of the, the hedge and the gate uh, fence over on this side. And of course, and then there's a peacock. There's a peacock that starts from down here and goes all the way up to here. This is where the peacock's head will be. So I've got a great big, huge peacock to stitch. And last night I started the peacock's tail right here. So I started my diagonal and I'm just gonna start working up this way. I don't know whether the peacock's head will be finished first or whether the rest of the hedge will be fi finished first but we'll see how that goes. Um, judging, it took me three weeks to stitch this. So it's gonna take me at least three more times through my rotation, I think, before I finish all of this. And then, and then the fun will really begin. I'll show you my garden scene. I still love how this turned out. the alphabet, and of course my fence and hedge with the gate. Yeah, so that's what I was able to accomplish today. And like I said, I'm, I'm really happy uh, with what I've been able to do. And I'm gonna put it away and it'll come back out in a couple months, I think. Okay, so that's what I worked on this is what I'm going to work on this week. Uh, this is my second oldest whip. I'm working through my rotation from oldest to youngest. It's kind of worked out that way. I'm going to be working on uh, four seasons. Uh, this is the Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along uh, for 2018. 
yeah, here we are 2020 and I'm still working on this. So I've been kind of slow. But this is what it looks like now. Um, I am stitching this on thirty-five count classic homespun from R and R. Uh, the floss that I, I am using is Silks for You PR zero seventy-five, which is a nice royal variegated blue, which I really love. I've already stitched uh, winter and spring and I'm working on summer and uh, just going off of memory I didn't realize that I'd actually stitched the word summer so I just need to finish this bottom half of the summer motif and that's what I'm hoping that I am able to to finish this week is I'm hoping that I can uh, I can finish finish this I think it's a great big huge plant and then of course down here, there's going to be one of these uh, triangle motifs and, a, and another triangle motif here. Um, I hope that I could, I'm hoping to finish summer and maybe, maybe get some of this triangle motif stitched. We'll see how much I can do. So yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited to be working on this after all of the complications of, of all the colors on English Garden Sampler. It's kind of nice to be able to stitch with just one color. So yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see how far I get, get with this this week. And I'll check in next week to, to, to share with you my progress. Okay, I have another, another item up for giveaway. Uh, I, I have one of these books. This is kind of off topic. It's not cross stitching, it's quilting. But I am going to give this book away. Uh, this is from the Fat Quarter Shop again. Um, and it's called Pillow Talk. It's a bunch of, of pillows uh, that you can design uh, that you can make it has some pretty good instructions as to how to how to construct the pillows and then there are several several designs uh, some of the designs use applique some of them are just quilting um, there's 25 of them and here here's a good look at all of the all of the pillows there's some pretty cool looking pillows here Here's an, uh, a United States flag. Um, this butterfly looks kind of cool too. Um, let's see, what else? Yeah. I kind of like, I kind of like this. This pillow. Uh, the chevron is kind of cool too. And there's also a bunch of blocks to show you how to make letters. Uh, this pillow uses uh, the H and the O, but you could, uh, you could create your own pillow uh, with, with the letters with your own message too. So yeah, there's lots of, lots of things that you can do. Um, if you are interested in owning this book, um, all you need to do is use the keyword pillow in your comments down below. I will use the YouTube random comment generator, and um, and I if and use that to to choose a winner next week. So, yeah, I I hope that uh, if there's anybody out there who who would like this book, uh, comment with the with the with the keyword pillow down below. Okay, so thank you for spending time with me. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that, that you did. As always, if you want to follow my daily progress, you can follow me on Instagram. I am at Blitzstitch on Instagram. Uh, thank you for all of your comments. Feel free to comment and like this video. 
I always look forward to hearing from you and would be glad to answer any questions that you have for me. And, and if you haven't yet, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, that way you can get uh, notifications when I post videos. Uh, as always, thank you for, for spending time with me. I hope that you have a great week and we will talk to you later. Goodbye.